Hey everyone, um, this video is to show how the loop functionality can be added in a SharePoint 2010 workflow. The loop is a new feature in the SharePoint 2013, however the same can be done in 2010 as well as long as you use the correct set of conditions and actions in both the workflow as well as the form. So for this example I've used the InfoPad Designer 2010 to build a web-based form and I've also done all the rules in that form as well, plus I've done that in the, um, the SharePoint 2010 designer. So in this section of the video, I'm going to focus on the form, uh, the different views of the form, um, the rules and the conditions added to uh, each form and how the rules uh, will apologize and how the forms will load um, depending on the conditions. So before we go into the form, I want to quickly go and look at the list and see the settings of this list. So let me go in and look at the settings. Um, the first thing I wanted to show is that you have to turn on the versioning settings. And in this case, I've just put in 16 for the uh, as the limit for the number of versions. This is a key functionality if you want to record all the conversations that are going on. And, and we'll see that more in detail. Um, and the columns over here are um, the ones that you see. Um, as you can see, I put in single line of text, uh, multi lines, date and time, choice, um, the people and group, which is for the attorney, um, and the loopback control is a number one. Um, the current status, I've, I've added all the choices for that, both the current status and the current workflow um, in the article. I've also gone ahead and built all these views, um, and these are just the views that are uh, mostly needed for. Uh, the form so that you can instead of going and looking all the um, contracts which are in progress you can actually go and see the contracts which are in a certain uh, stage so the views just help uh, narrow down um, the views of the the contract status all right so now that you've seen the list settings let's just go in and look at the form so i'm going to go ahead and click on the customize form um, as a reminder, this feature is only available for SharePoint Enterprise license. And here's the form. Um, let me go ahead and show you all the views. So here is the new form view. That's what the end user will see uh, fresh when they go ahead to put in a new contract. Um, after that, it goes to the legal admin. And this is what the legal admin will see. When they first receive the contract. After that, it would uh, it can go back to the requester to get more information. So there's a request to view, uh, and this is what the request to view sees. Um, after the requester uh, is completed, it can either go back to the legal admin or it can go to the attorney, and this is what the attorney view sees. As you can see, the attorney view and the legal administrator view is pretty much the same. And last but not the least is the completed view. Uh, the key things in the computer view in the completed view is that the contract uh, request completed date is added and the submit button is taken off. So let me now go to the new form view and let's just uh, look at the um, conditions. So right now I've gone into manage rules. This is the new form view. When you hit submit, um, these are the rules and the actions that are run. Um, the current status uh, field, its value will change to request, uh, request submitted. Um, and then the uh, data connection and the close the form is is the two other rules the cancel is pretty much the same um, for all of them is that for no conditions the form will close so let me now go into the administrator uh, view or the legal admin view submit button um, there is no fields that change it's just that the data is submitted and the form will close um, request a view when you hit submit, um, over here the loop back control fields value will change one. This is the key functionality for the loop back process built in 2010, and it will make more sense as we go through the workflow. Uh, but I just want to point out that uh, this is the key functionality. Um, and the attorney view is pretty much the same as the legal admin view, uh, same conditions for the submit. Uh, and then finally in the completed view. So let's go look at the um, form load. 
and the way I have set it is so that the new form will always load when the current status and the workflow status is new. Uh, by default, these are the um, settings for both of these fields. So when somebody comes and clicks on the form, um, it is forced to open the new view. After that is the legal admin view, and the legal admin view will always open when these are the two conditions that are met. Um, the request of view, these are the condi two conditions. Attorney view, these are the conditions, and then the completed view. So this is the brief outline of um, the form uh, built in Info by Designer 2010 um, and its views. As far as the form by itself goes, um, I just made sure that I was able to go ahead and hide the borders and shading. Um, just that way it, it gives the form a much more you know, web-based um, look. You see, there's uh, that's what it looks like. There's no shading what, whatsoever and it, it looks just like a very nice web-based form. So in the next video, I'm going to go through more of a step-by-step um, -step process for how the workflow will run and how the form will change. Um, and that's when I'm actually going to go ahead and make the uh, current status and the current workflow status change manually uh, since there is no uh, workflow running in the background. Um, and that's just to make sure that all the views of the form change um, in the settings that we want.